Austin Spare is one of the most overlooked figures in British art history. The obituaries that surrounded his death uh, remarked that with his passing, England had lost one of its best ever nude study artists. When you think that we are now some 50 odd years since his death, and except in knowledgeable and specialist circles, he is completely unknown. Austin Spare was a son of a policeman, uh, born in 1886, quite an ordinary sort of lad, no particular education, but from an early age he had this extraordinary talent for drawing. In 1904, he was the youngest ever exhibitor at the Royal Academy, or so people thought at the time. And immediately he was received as a boy genius. He found that rather stressful, I think. He'd come home, there'd be journalists already besieging his house. He was profiled in newspapers. I suppose people like the idea of being famous, but then when it actually comes to you, it's more of a burden. And that's really what he found, I think. It was stressful and he didn't like it at all. He somehow blew his career, I think, through lack of social skills. If he'd been able to do portrait work with clients, he could have become quite a rich man, but he was too shy and awkward. He couldn't do it. He was just too eccentric. He just went his own way. And so, of course, he ended up showing in pubs. Austin Spare decided that he was going to pretty much excommunicate the rest of the world and go and live amongst thieves, prostitutes, ordinary working people. He was taking it all in, he was absorbing it, and he was turning it into images. Not only was he an incredible artist, he was also, in my opinion, possibly the greatest English magician of the 20th century although obviously not magic of the Paul Daniels stage variety, but something of a, a slightly older provenance. I think that magic offers the artist a new way of looking at their consciousness and of looking at where they get their ideas from. Austin Osmond Spare was um, an extraordinary figure and he produced a body of work which is really unequaled in British art. And he drew very heavily from Buddhism, esoteric Buddhism. And it's worth remembering that at this time, sort of the first decade of the last century, Buddhism was fairly new in the West. And he developed a style which he called neither neither, it's a sort of philosophy. But he applied it to his art in a very unusual way and he would create pictures which were sort of conflicting, if you like, had conflicting principles within them. To give you an illustration, Spare executed a book plate, which was an image of a plant, a columbine. But when you look closely at it, you realize that the plant is actually made of dead birds. And when you look at it closely, you're asking yourself, is this a flower or is it something else? It seems to be neither, one nor the other. Great achievement for having a, an exhibition of Spare in Walworth was, of course, bringing a lot of his work back to the same borough in which it was produced, you know, over 70 years ago. This museum, the Cumming Museum, is on Walworth Road, just around the corner from where his Walworth Road studio was. So it's a way in bringing him back to his, um, to his old domicile. It's also a way of explaining just what a large spectrum of creative styles he, he produced through his um, 60 years of work. We're very lucky to find a new item, which was a, an unpublished or unseen sketchbook, a portfolio of pastings of erotic self-portraits in there that used to belong to Ian Forster, the famous um, British novelist. It's a very um, staggering piece of work in its own right and very interesting for the, for the famous provenance that it has. If you can manipulate your own consciousness and perhaps that of others 
which is surely something that all artists are trying to do, whether they're magicians or not, then you will have affected uh, an act of magic. This is a wonderful example of a typical Austin Osmond Spare image, if there is such a thing. If you're in a magical state, then if you create a piece of art while in that state, it is a way back into that state. It says, intrusive nostalgia, re-remembering, um, which I think means the state of consciousness where suddenly memories of past lives or genetic history, if you like, suddenly intrude upon you without your necessarily bidding them to do so. Spare was famous for doing automatic drawings, and that means that you don't think about what you're doing. You, you let your hand go for a walk. But because Spare was in contact with spirits, then they came through. He was their medium. He drew through the night in the dark frequently meant nothing to him. Some of them look as if he didn't take the pencil off the paper at all. It's just one continuous line. One figure becomes another, becomes another. It changes to anything you care to mention. Spare was a visionary. He was somebody like William Blake, who was not distinguishing between his art and his spirituality who felt that the world inside him was as valid and important as the world outside him, if not more so. 